After I got married, my wife and I moved into a small house on a quiet street. It was a single floor with two bedrooms. We were planning to have children soon, so the other bedroom would be for that. Although the houses were small, the lot size was actually pretty decent, which was one of the reasons that I liked the place. There were a lot of trees and other plants around there. Also, the neighbors were really quite friendly, at first. Jack was an older guy who lived across the street from us. He was single and lived by himself. I would guess that he was at least 65 years old. Jack always dressed well, like a grandfather or maybe some kind of college professor. He usually wore a plaid dress shirt with a cardigan or a sweater vest over top, and sometimes a bow tie. He was medium height, but walked with a bit of a hunch, which made him appear shorter. Jack was a really interesting guy. He used to own part of a construction company, but he sold his interest to one of his partners and spent the next couple decades working at a used bookstore. I really admired that about him. There's more to life than money, and if you're able to, then why not do something that you love? I was in my mid-twenties at the time, so in a way, Jack was kind of like a grandfather figure to me. I looked up to him, and as time went on, we actually became really good friends. He would invite my wife and I over for dinner every now and then, and we would have him over too. It was a Friday night, and we were at Jack's house for dinner. We were having a great time as usual. Dinner was still in the oven, so I decided to go to the washroom before it was done. I excused myself from the table and walked down the hall. On my way there, I passed Jack's office and looked in. His laptop computer was open on his desk, and it was turned on. I can't explain what drew me to it, but for some reason, I couldn't help but snoop around a little. I looked over my shoulder, and when I was sure that the coast was clear, I tiptoed into his office and sat down at his desk. I immediately felt guilty, but I couldn't resist my curiosity. I started by checking his browsing history, and there wasn't really anything interesting. In fact, it was squeaky clean. This guy didn't get up to much on the internet. However, when I checked his pictures, I noticed a shot of the outside of my house. As I scrolled through them, I started seeing more and more images of my house, all taken at night. He must have had hundreds of pictures of it from different angles. What was even creepier was that in one of them, I could see the outline of my wife from behind the curtain. My eyes were fixated on the screen, and I kept scrolling. My mouth was wide open. Eventually, the images started to get closer and closer to my house. My heart sank when I saw one picture, where the camera must have been pressed right up to our window. It looked to be the middle of the night. However, the most terrifying image was still to be found. Eventually, I found a single shot of my wife and I sleeping, and the picture was taken from the end of our bed. Jack had been sneaking into our house at night, all this time. With that, I had seen enough. I slammed the laptop closed and walked back to the dining room where my wife was alone with Jack. They were sitting at the table talking. My wife was blissfully unaware of who she was sitting next to. When I walked up to them, I couldn't even speak, so I just grabbed my wife's hand and walked out the front door. I didn't even put on my shoes. My wife was confused, but she trusted me and followed my lead. I told her everything when we got home, and we moved into a motel that night. We sold the house as soon as we could, and never saw Jack again. This was by far the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me. There's no telling how far Jack would have gone if I didn't find those images on his computer. But thankfully, we got away when we did. I moved out of my parents' house kind of late. My family relocated to the United States from Eastern Europe when I was a baby, but my parents still have very traditional values. So it took my father some convincing before he would let me leave the house. Especially since I'm a female, he thought I should stay longer. That being said, I was 24 when I finally got my own place. I had a steady job at the time, so I was able to afford a pretty decent one-bedroom apartment, not far from my parents. It was in one of two identical buildings that stood next to each other near a major bus terminal in our city. Each building was 20 floors, and every apartment had a balcony except the ground floor. My place was on the 14th floor, with a beautiful view of the highway. 
The balcony was decent sized, with a metal and glass railing. It was connected to my next door neighbor, with a concrete wall separating them. One thing that I really did like about this place was that there were no other buildings nearby, so I could go out there and not feel like people could see me. During my first week at this place, I introduced myself to some of my neighbors. Most of them were young professionals like me, and I even made a few friends early on. One of my neighbors, however, gave me a really bad feeling right from the beginning. He was right next door to me, and his name was Gary. He was probably 40 years old, maybe a little younger. Gary was around 5 foot 10 and stocky, kind of like a football player or something, except he was a little out of shape. He had a short beard, and he was always wearing a backwards baseball hat. Kind of strange for a guy his age, I thought, but not a big deal. We met for the first time in the hall outside our apartments. Like I said, we were next door neighbors. I immediately got the impression that he was hitting on me, and I'm not someone who thinks that about everyone. In fact, he pretty much asked me out the first time we ever met. I turned him down but tried to be as polite as possible. The last thing I wanted was to make an enemy with this guy. We did share a wall, after all. As the weeks went on, I ran into Gary often. This is bound to happen since we live next to each other, but it seemed to happen a little too often. It was quite typical that I'd be waiting for the elevator, and Gary would just walk up next to me. Maybe a coincidence, but I came to suspect that he would hear me when I left my apartment. Then he would come out to catch me in the elevator. I know it sounds kind of paranoid, but that kind of thing does happen, and it seriously gave me the creeps. It wasn't until the next month, though, that things got really out of control. I had gone to bed early, around 9pm I think. I was fast asleep well before 10. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I was still half asleep though. I was aware of my surroundings, but not thinking straight. I couldn't explain it at the time, but I felt a presence in my bedroom, like someone was watching me. I sat up and opened my eyes, and looked around the room, but it was still dark. I was fully awake at this point though. My cell phone had one of those flashlight apps, so I reached for it and turned on the light. I didn't see anything, but as soon as I turned it on, I heard a person run away and slam my front door. There was someone in my apartment. After that, I'm pretty sure that I heard Gary's door slam as well. Even without that piece of evidence, I would have thought it was him. I immediately dialed my parents and went over to their house that night. After I calmed down, I tried to think of how he got in. Although I can't be sure, my best guess is that he climbed around the wall separating our balconies and came in through the sliding glass door. I never kept that door locked because it seemed like nobody could get there anyway. Needless to say, I moved out of that place right away and back in with my parents. When I went back with my father to move my stuff out, Gary was nowhere to be seen. He must have been too afraid to show his face after what happened. I'm a female, and this happened when I was around 12. For some background, I've had this neighbor who lived a street down from me. For a couple months, he lived with his dad because he couldn't afford his own place. That was not a problem or anything. It can be tough out there. However, he started staring, peeking, and looking into windows of houses around the neighborhood. The police had been called on him multiple times, and he'd been arrested a handful of times for smaller things. While this was going on, rumors spread that he was lurking around the neighborhood, so parents became hesitant to let their kids play outside. One day, I met him face to face. I was walking home from my grandparents' house with my younger brother, who was 10. They lived a short walking distance from us. We walked and talked about how the day was going, while my mom drove home before us. We didn't want to drive in the car though, we wanted to walk instead. It was a nice day, and we enjoyed the fresh air. Once we finally turned the corner to our small cul-de-sac, we saw the man's car drive by. I whispered to my brother, That's the guy. He said, No way, really? And him being the smart ten-year-old that he was, he yelled to the moving car with the windows down. Not thinking he really heard us, I gave him a stern look and told him to keep walking. Meanwhile, the man turned his car around and started to follow us. I finally noticed in disbelief and screamed run. 
We ran to my mother's arms. She was waiting for us in the garage, not noticing what happened. The man did a loop in his car in the cul-de-sac and left going the way he came. He now knew where we lived. That night we all huddled together, nervous that he was lurking around the home. He never came, as far as we knew. Two weeks later, he was arrested for doing something inappropriate to a woman at Walmart. That was a year ago, and he's now back in the neighborhood causing trouble. Many rumors have been going around about what he's up to, but I'm not sure what's true. I wish this story had a better ending, but that's where we are today. Always wondering what happened to him, and always looking over my shoulder. When I was younger, I lived in the downtown core of a large city. Anyone who has lived there knows how tiny some of the apartments are. When space is that expensive, they really do whatever they can to cram as many people as possible into the space that they have. Therefore, my apartment was so small that my bed was really right next to the door. All I had at the time was a bed and a desk. I actually worked from home, so these two things were the bare essentials. Money was tight for me at the time, so I couldn't really afford anything more than that. In total, I lived there for about five years. That's longer than most people would stay in that building. My neighbors would change frequently. Some of them were students or travelers from other countries. There were also a few families and some young professionals among them. This story, however, is about the worst neighbor that I ever had. His name was Fred, and he was about 50 years old. He was a tall guy with bad posture, so he really stood at around average height, but I imagine that if he straightened his back, he would have been at least six foot two. He had shoulder length gray hair with a bushy unkempt beard and wore a plaid button down shirt almost every day. When I first met Fred, I introduced myself and immediately got bad vibes. He just seemed really unfriendly, like simply saying hello was some kind of a huge burden on him. He wouldn't even tell me his name until I asked explicitly. I didn't worry too much about it at first. I can be pretty awkward myself in social situations, so I can understand it to some extent. But what happened next was beyond that. I was sitting at my desk, which was next to my bed, and I heard someone walk up to my door. My apartment was at the end of the hall, so it was rare for anyone to walk past. I looked up from my computer screen, curious about why anyone would be out there. Just then, someone tried to open the door. There were two or three shakes on the door handle and one firm push. Luckily, I had remembered to lock the door, and as soon as they realized it was locked, they must have given up. I sat there startled for a few seconds, staring at the door. I got up and slowly tiptoed over to it, then looked out the peephole, but the coast was clear. He must have left already, I thought. I waited for a few seconds, then quietly cracked the door open and stuck my head out and looked down the hall. I could see Fred walking away, and he was carrying an empty duffel bag. I was super creeped out by this, especially because I sleep right next to that door. I know it would not be much safer if I had an actual bedroom, but there's something chilling about the fact that that guy could be so close to me while I'm sleeping, even if he can't get in. I ended up talking to one of my neighbors about Fred, and it turned out that others had complained about him. This was not the first time he'd tried that. Apparently he would walk around and try to open people's doors, hoping they'd left them unlocked. I don't think he had much success, because everyone always locks their doors. From then on, I just tried to avoid Fred, and never confronted him or anything but would occasionally wake up in the middle of the night, thinking I heard someone try to open my door. A few times I actually got up and looked down the hall. Other times I would just go back to sleep. I never caught him again, but I still wonder how many times he tried it while I was living there. <laughs> 